Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and we're Green Acre Homestead. This isn't a homestead. Where are we? Workshop. We're on the set of another YouTube channel. Oh what, my goodness. What YouTube channel is this we're in? Sam Craft. <laughs> for those who don't know, this is my workshop, and there is a separate channel for my workshop antics. But it's okay, rest assured, you're not on that channel. You're on Green Acre Homestead, which means it's a homestead related thing we're doing. It is. Sort of. It means Angela as well, because you're not on that other channel. No girls allowed. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Unless you want to be in the workshop. I am today. That's right. So, what are we doing today? This is something that I requested. And, hold on. I designed on SketchUp on the computer. And. Thanks to Pinterest for all of the ideas that we went through and found something that we, I liked. <laughs> it's we. You liked it and I said yes, I could build that. Yes, it would be affordable and worth it. It's amazing when you start looking at the things on there that, and I mean, some people can afford it, but three to five hundred dollars for a TV stand is a little All right. steep. That was the cat jumping out of the bag, so we're building a TV stand. Oh. We didn't say it was a TV stand until oh. you just said it. Oops. So we're building a TV stand. <laughs> Why are we building a TV stand? Ours has a little bit of a curve. It's a it. happy one. It's smiling at us. <laughs> the flat top now just kind of grins. <laughs> Hello. So it is time to do a new one and we need one a little more beefing just because that's how we build stuff. Well, that's how he builds stuff. You build stuff too like that? Like, I don't build, I demolish. Well, that's going to change today. Today you're going to build. <laughs> you cannot demolish anything in here. Please don't. What is that? This here is a dead tree. Oh. We have got three of these. They are two by ten by eight foot long construction boards. Southern yellow pine, basic, build a house wood. Well, we're not going to build a house with it. We are going to turn this into your TV stand. Let's go. Let's go. All right, this board is too thick for me to run through my table saw without having to change out the blade. So I'm just going to use my battery powered saw here. I'm going to go ahead and cut these three eight foot boards into four foot lengths to give us the rough length. And we can go ahead and start shaping these things a little bit better. Angel's already left. She totally flaked out and disappeared. Not. Where are you? Back here. Where it's safe. What are you talking about? Safest place is behind me because it has to hit me first. That makes a lot of sense. You realize it, right? Mm -hmm. Safety glasses. Where are they? I'm using my Craftsman cordless set here. The brand new battery, thanks to the Rodenzo family. This is a monster battery, so awesome, awesome. I appreciate it. I got these little scrap boards underneath this 2x10 to support it, allow me to cut it without cutting the workbench. And hopefully, everything works good. Let's go! I was looking and ducking. Alright, this one is going to be our sides because there's a pretty big crack all the way up to about this point, so that's trash. Have to use this part. I'll just hide it. It's okay. Do that or go spend a lot more money for the board, huh? Moving 
kids have disappeared. You want to cut one? I do finish work. Why don't you do demo work? Next thing to do is go ahead and run all these boards through the table saw and cut off the factory kind of rounded over beat up edges of these boards to give me nice square cut flat edges to either glue or just have for prettiness sake. So let's go ahead and get the fans on, dust mask on, and get to ripping some wood. I went ahead and put the fans on the remote. Okay. So here's the exhaust fan and the window fan and the shop vac. To the store. <laughs> We've got our pieces here and these two are going to be glued together to become the top and we have the other two over there for the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put my pencil marks on here. First is to remind me how these line up and for that you just do a simple triangle. That way when they go back together, you know, triangle. And then from here what I'm going to use to join these together is a biscuit joiner and I've got, ooh, not that many. Uh, not many biscuits <laughs> left to join it, but I'm just going to put some lines through here. And these are to line up the biscuits to cut with the joiner and then glue these together with. Now let me go make sure if I see you got any more biscuits. No. Alright, come in close. Let me show you the biscuit joiner. This is a tool I got used from uh, some guy off of Craigslist back in the day when Craigslist was the thing. Tells you how long ago it was. Basically, it's a circular saw. When you push it, it comes out and cuts a little slot. Cuts half of a biscuit, and the biscuits are shaped like footballs. They're not called footballs though, they're called biscuits. Probably must be a British thing. Anyway, you push it, blah, 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 done, and then <laughs> you'll see more. But I wanted to show you that at least till I, before I plugged it up. So the important thing to do with biscuit joinery if you've got one like mine which references off the bottom or the surface they have some that have these cool little shelves this thing's too old for that so you want to make sure whatever your biscuit joiner is sitting on your wood pieces are sitting on as well and just don't get tops and bottoms flipped around because then they won't line up as good otherwise it's a matter of laying the piece down and then lining up your pencil mark with the tiny little mark that's here on the joiner pulling the trigger plunging it and that's it There you go. Cuts out one little slot. So the cool thing about biscuit joinery 
is it's actually a little bit sloppy. So you don't have to be dead on perfect. That's how I was able to do those cuts pretty quickly. So one side's done, now we'll do the other. All right, with that done, this is why you do the triangle because you flip your pieces back and line up your pencil marks to make a little triangle. All right, let's grab some biscuits. Clamps. We've got our pieces facing each other. These are the surfaces to glue together. First thing to do is to slap down some glue on each side for each face. After we get the glue thing unplugged. And then I use a little silicone glue brush to spread it out. Now I'm putting glue in the slots for the biscuits. Once again, being super precise. And then we'll just put the biscuits in. And here you can see how it's kind of a sloppy back and forth fit. That's why I was not being so concerned about lining up the lines perfectly because it is a forgiving system by nature, which is nice. All right, at this point, we'll just put the two pieces of wood together. This is glued up. We can get this out of the way and glue up the second piece next. Heavy. All right, this guy here was a little more ornery. That's why there's a lot more clamps on here, but it is uh, good enough. That's right. So we'll go ahead and leave them overnight and we'll pick this back up tomorrow. See you then. Well, hello everybody! Welcome back to the next day. It's time to go ahead and start unclamping these things and pretty much seeing what kind of a mess we're in for using construction lumber for furniture making. That's okay. Again, we're going for a rustic look. This is going to get us rustic. <laughs> yeah, rustic all right. That's all right. This is the bottom shelf. So now let's see how the top shelf looks. Okay, good. The top doesn't look that bad. There's a little bit of damage here on this piece of wood. I wish I would have saw that because I think this is the top. Yeah, because that's really ugly. Um, you know what? This is the top. It is what it is. It's rustic. Remember. Remember, Sam. It's rustic. It's okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all my clamps, and then I'll begin scraping this glue off, and we will go from there. So to scrape the glue off, I'm going to be using one of these <laughs> glue scrapers. Imagine that. Um, this is really good. It's pretty much like a razor blade. It's three-sided and it's nice just to lay flat and kind of scrape the glue off the pieces. So let's scrape some glue. So interesting.
All right, the next thing to do is to go ahead and mark out the notches that are going to get cut and the two big pieces we've worked so hard not to mess up, we're now going to cut for notches and it's going to form kind of like a really large box joint jig. It's going to kind of lock together. I'm going to space it four and a half inches off the front or the X side. And then I'll just mark. Alright, this goes with this. So let's go ahead and cut this slot. I'm going to use my jigsaw for this cut. See how much the wood moves as you cut it? <laughs> it's got the blade stuck. We are dry fitting this right now and I'm going to see if everything works. To be totally honest, this project looks horrible to me. Um, it's not gone smooth. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's all I want to say about that. Alright, grab that into the top. Now it's not going to like sit there forever. This one needs hit in. Yeah, this one does too. I feel like your top needs to go that way. For my piece to go in. It's all about me. Okay. How does yours need to go to fit? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Do woodworking. Hi, I make woodworking stuff. Buy it, because obviously this is such a showcase of my skills. I ain't gonna do that, it'll hurt myself. Well, these boards are warped. They have warped a lot in the past two days. They have gone from a life they thought would be lived as a floor framing to trying to be forced into a world's ugliest TV thing. That is not ugly. It's homely. Isn't that what they say? Homely. Yep. Um, alright, so go ahead and I'll take it apart and let you start sanding. Okay. Because you want to sand it before we assemble it, or do you? Yes. Okay. But yeah, sanding. It'll loosen this up just a hair, too. It will. Okay.
not going to cinch it down, but I like those, how they look. This is our last screw. Yay. sawdust off and then oh, I need to stain it. And kind of the same thing. There we go. We're going to start staining the bottom undersides first and the stain we picked up is Minwax mm -hmm. and it's the early American. So Let's see what it looks like. It's like some early Americans in here. It's Pilgrim. They should call it Pilgrim. It's probably some, I don't know, copyright. Quaker Oats owns it or something. Oh my gosh, it's dark. No, I don't know. Cool. Well, tell them uh, we'll see you guys in about six hours. <laughs> six hours. Be in the middle of the night. Good job. couple of kites in here <laughs> I got a headache <laughs> I hadn't stopped huffing long enough to get a headache well here it is early American and I like it what do you think about it it's darker than I had figured it would be but it is very pretty it reminds me of a gun stock yeah I can see that I like how it matches the black hardware we've got it does so that's all we can do for tonight when you let this sit overnight when you let the whole shop air out 
let this cure and then tomorrow we'll come back and probably put well definitely some other things on it don't want to say what just yet and then also think about if we want to do a clear coat or not yeah we'll think about it i like the matte finish but i feel like we need something at least on the top parts of the shelves or whatever to protect it from life and kids putting drinks on it or something like that yeah or captain america goes swimming and well whatever anyway we can think about that overnight um yeah guys have a good one we'll see you in about a second but that'll be tomorrow for us bye <laughs> what why did i say bye because <laughs> that's your like programmed response okay i gotta get out all right i'm gonna leave this fan on overnight This is set overnight. The stain is totally cured and dried and I've had it sitting over here next to a box fan blowing the air out of the workshop to try and get the smell out of here. What I want to do next is actually get some spray lacquer that I have and go ahead and give it a couple of coats of clear lacquer to help protect the surface. Give a little bit of a hard you know finish on it and finish it. Just That's what we're going to do. I'm already going to change tactics. I'm going to turn this where the top faces me so I can keep the can vertical as I spray. Oh, you guys want to see what I'm doing? Come on over here. Is that better? Is that good? All right, let's go. I've got all of this coated. I'm gonna let it dry for a while and come back with, I have a green scotch bright pad. Lightly scuff this to kind of sand it and then I'll do a final coat and that will be good enough. It's time for me to mount the legs. I'm going to be using my self-centering drill bit to drill the pilot holes. I don't want to show you guys what the legs are just yet. So I'll get a couple of clips very selectively showing me drilling the holes and then attaching them. But then I want to save the whole, I guess, grand reveal for a little bit later. So teaser coming up. If you don't like teasers, skip on ahead.
Well, that was a nice surprise to come home to. Yep, it kind of stinks in the house still. It does. And I'm sorry, but windows are open, box fans going. I think it'll be good by tomorrow. Or we'll, we'll be used to the it. Windows open and. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can do that. It's not too cold yet. I think it changed the look of our living room, and I have to say I really like it. Uh oh, that is code for more uh, changes to come. No, I've started something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, we've not really renovated the living room. We did the floor mm -hmm. before we moved in the house, but other than that... It's been the same for five years, and that's not really like us. No. I'm ready to put new drywall in here, though. I've been wanting to do that for years. It's on the list. <laughs> yeah, it's on the list. We have a really big list, by the way. We do. And it doesn't seem to get any smaller. It gets larger. <laughs> Job security? No. No. Life? We won't we, get we bored. Won't, yeah, we won't get bored. I was going to say that to you. So, it looks a little empty. Is that the way you want to leave it, or what? I actually have a little container that, um, it's actually a sheep container. It's really cute. Imagine that. And I'm going to put some, like a nice little arrangement in it, and it'll sit there. On the shelf? Yes. Like flowers? Well, silk flowers. Okay, yes. fake flowers. Okay. I'm just asking. That's not my area of expertise. Well, we don't really have a lot of room in this little single wide for no, frou-frou stuff. No, we've got tons of room. We just don't use that part of the house. <laughs> so this will be my own little frou-frou-ness. Frou-frou space. Frou-frou space. Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this side little project. We enjoyed getting to make it and do this together, and it did turn out really good. It did. So... We appreciate you guys watching as always. Leave us a comment down below. Uh, anything else I forgot? And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.